Hello everybody and welcome back to another RevWise video. Today we're going to be going through how to name organic compounds for GCSE slash IGCSE chemistry. It's going to be a very basic video as many students struggle to name organic compounds. I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible to understand and hopefully you can exit the video with a better understanding of how to name organic compounds. So let's go right into it. First let's start with a recap of organic chemistry. What is an organic compound? Well, an organic compound is any compound which contains carbon. Now, what is a hydrocarbon? You may have heard this term very frequently when you're studying organic chemistry. It's important that you recognize a hydrocarbon or compounds which contain only carbon and hydrogen. So you'll find many compounds which contain carbon and hydrogen and other elements as well, but hydrocarbons are special because they contain only carbon and hydrogen. Next, let's look at homologous series. See, so a homologous series is a family of organic compounds that have similar features and chemical properties due to them having the same functional group, and we'll define functional group in a second. But basically, homologous series all differ by a common structural unit. They're essentially the families, and if you look on the table on the right, you can see the names of some of the homologous series that you'll have to know. A lot of those in that table you will not have to know for IGCSE, but it's good to have in mind. And finally, like what I said before, we have a functional group. So a functional group is simply a group of atoms bonded in a specific arrangement that influences the properties of the homologous series. And they're essentially the thing that makes each homologous series unique as each of them has their own unique functional group. Now, if you look on the table to the right, you can see some of the homologous series that you might have to know. And the main ones I think you should keep attention to is alkanes, alkenes, alcohols, esters, and carboxylic acids. And I don't think we have esters there, but uh, yeah, alkanes, alkenes, alcohols, and carboxylic acids are very important for your syllabus, especially alkanes and alkenes and alcohols. So just remember these functional groups. They're very easy to remember. These ones are very basic. The rest of them can get kind of complicated, but luckily you don't need to know them. So we'll go more into this later, but these are what homologous series and functional groups are. Let's do some more recap. So there's a, lots of different types of formulas we need to know for organic chemistry. The first type is called a molecular formula. The molecular formula shows the actual number of atoms in a molecule. Now, in converse, there's something known as the empirical formula, which is the, which shows the smallest whole number ratio of the atoms in a molecule. Essentially, if we had a molecule which had, which had the total atoms of C2, H4O2. The molecular formula would be just that, C2H4O2. But if you see, they're all divisible by 2. So if we take the empirical formula, we would be able to take the smallest whole number ratio of that and divide everything by 2 and get CH2O. And that's basically how you differentiate between something like a molecular formula and empirical formula. I don't have a empirical, for empirical formula here because it's better to study that separately, but it's something that you should, might need to know. Next, we have displayed formula. The displayed formula shows the spatial arrangement of all atoms and bonds in a molecule. The displayed formula has to show every bond in the molecule. So even if you have a CH3, you have to show every single bond between the carbon and hydrogen. If you have a methyl group, ethyl group, you need to write every single bond because that's the nature of the displayed formula. Finally, we have the structural formula. See, the structural formula is similar to the displayed formula, but unlike the displayed formula, we don't need to show every single bond. See, it shows enough of the structure to make it clear, but only the important bonds are always shown, such as double and triple bonds, and that's what makes it unique. So now, let's go right into the naming process. So the basic components of naming organic compounds has to do with prefixes and suffixes. See, our prefix shows how many carbon atoms are present in the longest continuous carbon chain in the compound. Now, this may seem confusing, but I'll explain it as we go on. The suffix tells, suffix tells you what functional group the compound has. Now, you will have to memorize the naming conventions here, but they are actually quite easy. So let's look at the prefixes first. As you can see here, we have a lot of different prefixes for the number of carbons. So the, this is the number of carbons that are present in the longest continuous carbon chain. So if we have one carbon present, our prefix is going to be meth. Two, eth, three, prop, 
4, but, 5, pent, 6, hept, and so on. 6, hex, and so on. Sorry. As you can see, these are quite similar to some of the prefixes you might have used in other subjects, such as mathematics, uh, especially from 5 to 10, the pent, hex, hept, oct, non, dec, you might be familiar with those. But as for the meth, eth, probe, and bute, you might not have seen those before. So it's important you remember them. And most of the molecules you'll see will either have a meth prefix, an eth prefix, a probe prefix, or a bute prefix. So it's, remem it's good to remember all of these, that meth is 1, eth means 2, probe means 3, and bute means 4. And the rest of them should be pretty self-explanatory. Now for the suffixes. Each of the suffixes is unique for the different homologous series. One of the homologous series is an alkane, which is, as you can see in the table, is known by the functional group of C single bond C. It's very common, very easy to recognize, and the suffix is ane. So let's say we had a one carbon alkane. We would have methane. Methane. And that's basically how it works. You just take the prefix and suffix, put it together, and it's very simple. Another suffix we need to know is the alkene suffix, which is similar to the alkane one, except instead of ane, we have ene. So we can't have a one carbon, one carbon alkene because it requires a C double bond C. So let's say if we have a two carbon alkene, what will we have? Well, we look at the prefix for two, and it's eth, and then we know it's an alkene, so it's going to end with ene, so we have eth, ene. There we go. And finally, let's try alcohol, which you might need to know as well. So let's say we have a three carbon alcohol. So we take the prefix prop for three, and then we put in the suffix for alcohol, which is anol. Uh, essentially, it's all, but yeah, uh, sorry, the table is a bit confusing in that a uh, in that regard it's actually all but in the way we say it it's actually probe and all and for any of them if you had um eth it would be eth and all probe and all but and all so it's essentially like that so the suffix is technically and all it's technically all but we write it as and all just how for carboxylic acid we would write anoic acid even though the suffix is technically oic acid so a bit confusing but hope you understood that now if you're confused, don't worry. We're about to do a lot of examples. So let's go through all of these on the screen here. So the one on the very left, let's see. So let's try and identify it step by step. We have one carbon here, okay? And it looks like there's no double bonds because there's only one carbon. And there doesn't seem to be any of the other functional groups we saw in the previous slide. We don't see the... Uh, o single bond H, we're not seeing any double bonds, we're not seeing anything like that. So, when we have all single bonds, we have one carbon, what could it be? Well, we know with one carbon means we're going to have the meth prefix, but our suffix is going to be that of an alkane, meaning we have methane. This is methane or methane, however you say it. So that's what we have here. Now, if we look to the bottom, let's try this. Now, this definitely isn't an alkane. Why? Well, you can see here we have an O here, and we never saw an O in the functional group for an alkane, so this is not an alkane. So what could it be? Well, if we go to our table, we can see that an alcohol has an O single bond H, and what does this have? O single bond H. So this looks to be an alcohol. Now we know it's an alcohol. Let's count the longest continuous chain of carbons. We have one, two. Two is the longest chain, therefore we have an Eth. So it's eth, and then we add the suffix eth and all. This is ethanol. There we go. Now, let's try this one. Now here we have a double bond in this one. And we have one, two, three, four carbons. So four carbons, and we have a double bond. So we know for four carbons we have but. And for the double bond, that means it's going to be an ene for alkene. So it's going to be butene. But wait, is this the only way we can name this? From what I've told you so far, it seems like butene should be the only way to give the answer. But is that the only structural formula we can write for this? What if we move this double bond between the first and second carbon? What if we move that to the middle, the second and third carbon? Is it going to be named the same? 
Is it still going to be butene or do we have to say call it differently? So this introduces the idea of isomers. So isomers are compounds that have the same molecular formula but different displayed formulae. So basically we have these two here, but butene and butene. They're both butene, they're both four carbon and they both have a double bond. But as you can see, the double bond's in a different location. And essentially, the location of the double bond changes how we name it. See, for this one, because the double bond is between the first and second carbons, it's but-1-ene, but-1-ene, because it's between the first and second carbons. It comes off the first, and we use the smallest one, so it's going to become but-1-ene. But as you can see for this one, it's going from the second and the third carbon. So instead of calling it but-1-ene, we call it but-2-ene in order to differentiate it. That's basically the idea of isomers. So we, we have but-1-ene and but-2-ene. So we have two different isomers for this. And you might get asked to write different isomers. So yeah, these are different isomers for butene. Now, this is one final example I would like to show you. And it's something that might not pop up in your exams, but it's good to have the knowledge because you might be presented with this molecule, but maybe not asked to name it. This is what we call a branched molecule. And a branched molecule is unique because it requires us to think about different ways of naming it and different things we have to take account of. And I really wanted to show you this because it shows you what I mean by longest continuous chain. See, earlier when I said how to name it, it's, I said the prefixes showed how many carbon atoms are present in the longest continuous chain. Now for the rest of this, these, these have all been a single straight chain, so it's been easy to see. But for this, there's two ways we can look at the chain. We can look at it as one, two, three, four, five, six. But another long continuous chain is this, one, two, three three, four, five, six. Now in this case, they're both the same length, so either chain can be used. But if, let's say there was another carbon up here, it would be a longer chain this way and we would have to think about it differently. So remember, the chain, as long as continuous chain, doesn't have to be completely straight like that, like a horizontal one. It can go up as long as it's a continuous straight chain. Now, now that we got that cleared up, we know it's a hexane because both are six, whether we go this way or this way. But how do we name this thing that's hanging out the side? Because we can't just call it hexane because there's seven carbons here, but we can call it heptane because there's not a long continuous chain of seven carbons. So how do we name it? So let's say we take it like this. We have carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five, carbon six. Okay, let's name it like that. We need to look to which carbon the branch is coming out of. So this is the branch, the part that's sticking out, the part that's not with the rest of them, right? If we looked at it this way, this would be the branch, but in this case, this is the branch. So we're thinking of the branch here. Which carbon is the branch coming out of? It's coming out of carbon two. So carbon one, carbon two is coming out of here. So the way we name it is we write two first, and then we basically write another prefix depending on how many carbons are in the branch. So in this, in this branch, there's only one carbon. So we use the uh, prefix methyl, methyl. If there were two carbons, you can guess it would be ethyl, three, propyl, four, butyl, and it goes on like that. So this is two methyl and then hexane, just like that. So that's basically how you name a branched one. It's not really necessary for you to know, um, just a bit of extra knowledge if you wanted to know. But other than that, that's basically the extent to IGCSE organic, uh, organic molecules. It's really not that complicated, it's pretty simple. The hardest part I would say wrapping your head around is isomerism, so I think you should practice isomers, try and finding other isomers for molecules. But other than that, I think this is a pretty easy concept that many students have trouble with because they're not taught properly. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Hopefully you learned something. And if you guys want me to make a video on anything else, just let me know. See you guys in the next one.